Always make sure you pick the center, not the quadrant. I've done that before. You come in in the morning and it didn't work. If I did this and it was on the inside, the punch would then be about 12 thou too small because we're using a, a 10 thou wire between 11 and 10 thou. Why do we glue in and not use magnets all the time? Excellent question. Most of the time we do use magnets. Uh, it's just fast and easy. Um, but depending on what the cutting clearance is and depending on the function of the part, we're going to glue them in. Hey guys, Ron Grobles here from Cam Wire for Practical Machinist. On this episode of Learn to Burn, we're going to talk about uh, actually programming the punches that we uh, looked at in the last episode where we cleaned up the CAD and got it ready for programming. So we'll go out to the machine, actually do the programming out there, um, get it ready to send to the, to the machine. And the next episode, we'll actually do the setup get the machine running. I'll talk to you about offsets and all that good stuff. And then uh, we'll actually start cutting. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I've imported our uh, geometry into the programming software for the wire machines. I've set up our datum corner as this corner here. So when we pick up the wire on the wire, we'll pick up that face and that face and call that zero. You can see how the geometry is offset in the block we sometimes will leave if the blocks are small enough, we'll leave three quarters of an inch on the outside edge so we can just clamp directly to the table. We don't need to put it in a vise or a holding fixture. Again, this depends on the size of the block, material type, stuff like that. So a few things um, you need to think of when you're first start programming is, what do you need? What's the result you need out of this when you're done? For us, uh, these punches, it's a uh, very high tight cutting clearance in the die so we need to make sure these are really good so we're going to add a few skims into this but you need to decide that ahead of time how many skims do you need if you need any what uh what process do you want to use um is it open chain closed chain these are closed chain because we're cutting all the way around open chain is when you're only cutting partial and i'll show you another block afterwards that will uh that's already programmed i'll run through the program with you and that's a good example of an open chain. All right, so let's get into this programming. Uh, we'll just program a couple of them. Uh, very simple, straightforward, but I'll show you a couple options. So first thing you want to do is add in your wire start points. That's what these holes here are for. We're going to add a couple wire start points in here. Position, we want to make sure that this is set for a thread point. Always make sure you pick the center, not the quadrant. I've done that before. Then it goes to thread the wire and it hits and it won't thread and causes problems. You come in in the morning and it didn't work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to import our tool paths. Now these are some of the tool paths we've already got preset. Inside, you want to keep the outside of what you're cutting, such as a dowel hole, for instance. You use inside and then determine which, uh, how many skin passes you want. Um, inside, Counter bore up, counter bore down. This is something we created for um, uh, cutting die steels. Punches, these are what we're gonna use. Punch left, punch left part after. Uh, punch with skim. So we're gonna use a couple of these. Right now we're gonna use um, punch left part after. Hit okay. That, or so that's brought in all the presets already. So there's no tool path because we haven't created the geometry yet. So the other thing I like to do before getting ahead of myself here, um, cause this has all the, uh, the wireframe for the entire block here. I'm just going to get rid of everything else. And I just want the top chains. I don't want the side holes. There we go. This makes it easier, less chance of picking a wrong chain or something like that. All right, now we're gonna add our geometry. So we're gonna go to add, make sure this is on chain. That's partial chain, we don't want that. We want full chain. We're gonna select our start point here. Then we're gonna pick our chain. Now, what this is telling me, the wire is gonna come in here and start here and it's gonna go around this way. I'm gonna hit okay for now. I don't really like that, but I'm gonna hit okay for now. 
Now, the other important thing to understand is see this arrow going this way. That is telling me that the wire diameter is going to be on this side of the line. So that means the full diameter of the wire is going to be here. If you got to pay attention to that, because if this was a die section or you wanted to keep this part here and the wire was on this side of the line, that means this would be bigger than your your final product that you want because you actually have the diameter of the wire plus a little bit of the overburn. i show you what I mean here. So you can go in here, you can change the side. So now the, it's saying that the wire is going to be on this side. Because I want to keep this punch, if I did this and it was on the inside, the punch would then be about 12 thou too small because we're using a, a 10 thou wire between 11 and, and 12 thou. We're using a 10 thou wire. Our punch would be small because we're, the burn was on this side. I'm going to change that back. But one thing I don't like here, actually, you know what? I'm going to program this first. I'll do the tool path. I want to show you the result and then I'm going to change it. Okay, so we're going to do a back plot. So there it is, it's leaving and heading to the punch. You can see the geometry there. That's where the tab is. Then it has a cutoff. So it'll leave an M01 here. I'll wait for you to come and either put a magnet on it or glue it in and then part it off. Now, speaking of magnets and gluing in, I had a good uh, question on the last episode is, <clears throat> why do we glue in and not use magnets all the time? Excellent question. Most of the time we do use magnets. Uh, it's just fast and easy. Um, but depending on what the cutting clearance is and depending on the function of the part, if it's really tiny or we're going to do skims after we do the part off, we're going to glue it in. Just depends on the application. On these particular ones, we're going to glue them in. The newer machines have some options where they will actually take the wire and it will braise some spots in the top and then you can do a part off and skim cuts and then just knock it off afterwards pretty neat we don't have that machine here yet hopefully in the near future all right so this is uh, back to the programming this uh, this program here has no skim cuts and it's a very small tab to hold this on so you got, that's the other thing you got to think of is what size of tab do you want when you're holding it on? I want a bigger tab. So what you can do here, you go into parameters. Now this is all your cut parameters. The wire and power parameters, we leave that alone. That's already all preset. So here, perform rough cut. We're not doing any skims on this particular program. The tab. We're going to have a tab. Let's say we want to do a 50 thou tab. Number of tab cuts one. We don't want to do any skim cuts after the tab. You can see the program here. It's going to rough. Then it's going to tab with a stop. We're going to hit the back plot button again. Now we're going to back plot it. Let's see what this does. So here's what I don't like. We changed the tab length to 50 thou, but now it's around the radius. And I'll do a part off. So you're going to get a bump right on the radius on the tangency point, which is probably okay. But I'll show you another option if you don't like that. Now oh, you can change that. So we're going to go into our geometry here. This chain, I am going to reverse the way it's going. So it, instead of going here and down this way, and it's going to come in and go around. Uh, but look at that. Now it changes the direction of where the wire is. Pay attention to that is now I'm going to change sides. There we go. So we're changing direction and now we're changing which side of the wire is on. Okay. Back plot again. Okay. Now it's going to go around. There, that's a little better. I like that more. Do a part off. 
Now I can take this over to the grinder and just slightly dust the, uh, the tab off there. That's up to you. This is just personal preference choice and also what's practical. Is the tab long enough or big enough to be able to hold it or enough that things aren't gonna move around when you're doing cutoff? So that's an example of just a one burn rough pass if it's if you got you have a, a bigger punch that has 10 thou cutting clearance and it just gets bolted down to the shoe and it has a bunch of screws and dowels in it more often than not a one pass is fine for these particular punches again because the cutting clearance is so tight we're going to do ones with skim cuts so we're going to import punches with skim part after add our geometry full chain select this okay arrows on the right side okay now we're going to go into our parameters here how many skim cuts do you want i want to do three on this one tab width is a quarter inch we're going to bring that down 0.125 and do a back cloth. Now see how this has come around the corner here. So we're going to change that direction. Back plot it again. Let's see. There we go. Now, the reason why I want this size of tab here is to make sure that this is held nice and strong while we're doing the skim cuts. I like the tab here because it's not doing actually any cutting in this area. This side of the punch isn't actually doing cutting in the die. So what that allows me to do is there's going to be a bit of a bump here when it uh, parts off. So we're going to go in and grind this afterwards. That way the uh, tool maker can uh, grind it right down to match these two areas here. And that's how we'll process those punches. Now, what you could do also is add a skim cuts to the part off after, in that case, we glue it in. And well, we're going to glue these in anyway, but um, you'd add a skim cut to the part off, and then you could also get that in so it's right bang on and you don't have to grind it. So that's how we would process these punches. I'm just going to program these two, but we'd take this uh, last one with all the additional skim cuts and then apply that to all of these punches. Now what I want to do next is show you the um, open chain part. So this has already been programmed. This is a, a cam trim punch. So as you can see here, we're going to make do a couple dowels. We got our cutting profile here, and then there's an angle down at the bottom here for it fits into the cam. So what we did on this part is first is an open chain pass, two pass. So that means we're going to do a skim. So I'll do a back plot here. Show you what it's going to do. So it's going to start here. We're going to come straight in. And we're going to come to there. Come out. And then it, you can see how it's starting to come back because that's the skim cut. And 
in this one skim. The next pass, back by that one. So inside two pass, this is for the dowel holes. So we'll do the rough cut, you pull the slug, and then you do your pass, skim pass. Now it goes over to the next dowel hole. Pull the slug, and that takes that one. Now we got one more open chain two pass. It's just gonna do these radiuses here, down in here, and then put this angle on. There we go. Now you see this note on here, we're gonna cut it on 0.745 feet. So we have uh, feet that we mount this to, that um, we'll screw this down to. They're 0.745 thick. So you just add that in your, your parameters. That applies if, um, this number is important if you're cutting taper on the on these, but we're not cutting taper, this is just a straight. So that also helps us affect on like when we charge the customer because it cuts, uh, slows down the cutting time. We'll uh, account for that as well. All right. So the next thing to do then is we're gonna post it. Hit okay. There we go. Let's do. Now this is all the G code that's gonna get sent to the machine. I'll do another episode and going through what the G code for the wires is. It's different methods. So it's gonna have the all thread point here. It's gonna go to the thread point thread the wire, turn on the flushing, submerge mode, and go through the, all the different movements. So I'll export this out to the wire machine and then set the block up and start wire cutting. So that would be the next episode. We'll uh, I'll get, actually put these blocks on the machine. We'll put uh, this block on the machine and we'll actually uh, do some wire cutting. Show you how to set it, how we set it up load the program into the machine, change the parameters, cut parameters on the machine to get optimal cutting either when we're here or when we're away. And we'll usually slow it down a little bit at night when we're away. Thanks for watching this episode of Learn to Burn. I hope you learned something about some very basic wire programming. Next episode, we'll get the block set up, bring the file into the machine, get it cutting and play around with some offsets. Leave the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And in the meantime, keep the spools turning and those wires burning.